Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video called, What Do You Have to Lose? I'm going to start out showing you how I use acrylic inks and plastic wrap to create some textures in my paintings. And then I'm going to show you one of the ways that I cover over and reuse failed paintings. After all, covering up something that already is not going to work, it's like, what do you have to lose? I hope you'll enjoy the video and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I start out by assembling all the products I'm going to use. These are acrylic inks. They're made by Liquitex, Bombay, all different kinds of producers. And I also have some granulation fluid, which I'm just experimenting with for the first time. I wax the edges of my paintings before I start to paint because it keeps the fluids from running off and all over the table. I sprayed down my paper and then I came in with some ink nice and bright. I have a rough idea of what I want to try to do. And I know that if it doesn't work, I can try something else with this. So I'm just applying color freely and loosely. I usually put down the bright colors first. And then I put down the white opaque ink on top. In this case, I'm also going to try the granulation liquid and see what it does. So that's what I'm doing here. I didn't get any formal instructions on how to use it, so I'm splattering it on and painting it on, cleaning my brush carefully so I don't bring pigment back into the liquid. And I guess this is an experiment in seeing what's going to happen. This is the opaque white ink going on last. Then I cover it over with plastic wrap and put on some heavy books to weight it down. This is a bunch of work that I didn't like and I would have thrown out, but instead of throwing it out, I'm trying to give it a new start. It's not very good art, and all artists do stuff that they're not particularly proud of. So this is mine. It's all taped down and ready to go, and I have my inks all set out and ready to go as well. I have my candle, which is wax, out, and I'm going to go around the edges of each of these paintings. Again, the wax will contain some of the liquid from spreading all over the boards and all over the table, and I find that to be a useful tool, at least for me. The next thing I work on is spraying down the paper with water. These are going to be random. I have no plan for anything at this point except to cover over the art that failed. It's funny, people say to me, you never do bad art, all your paintings are beautiful. And I say to them, that's because I don't show you the bad ones. So you're getting a peek at some of the bad stuff that I've done. And I saw no way to take it any further. So it's getting covered up. And again, I'm reusing my paper and also, the underlying paintings sometimes make very interesting patterns and shapes to suggest the next painting. So I like to do this, and it's fun, and it feels like playing. Here's the first one covered over. You'd never know, that was a boring landscape. I've used different colors, black, white. Put them on in a rat random pattern. And next they're going to get covered over with plastic wrap. Applying the plastic wrap can be done just sheerly plopping it on or the plastic wrap can be molded 
shaped and squished around on the surface to try to approximate different shapes. For example, if you wanted to paint tree trunks going straight up and down, you could force the plastic wrap into folds that would go straight up and down. You could also do the same thing with diagonal shapes or curves to some extent. One of the main purposes of squishing the plastic wrap around is to make sure the paint all gets squished back onto the surface and doesn't run off all over the place. You might as well use your paint. Here's the next painting covered up with paint and then with plastic wrap again. As you can see, I'm trying to pull it into a certain shape across the top. We'll see if it does anything. This next painting was a squirrel that I was doing as a demonstration for one of my art students. I wet everything down, and then I put all my pigment right where the squirrel was to cover it up. But instead of deciding to paint, cover it with plastic wrap at this point, it looks so pretty the way the paint was spreading around on the wet paper. I decided I wasn't going to cover this one. Instead of covering it, I decided to put some of the granulation fluid in it and then just let it sit and see what happened. I dip a brush into the granulation fluid and then I splatter it on and in some places I tried painting it on. Again, I wasn't sure exactly how to use this product, and I'll see what it does. The last painting had been a floral, so I went with some pink colors, as well as some deep greens, and just dropped them on. I tried to leave some clear places where the actual colors of the underpainting were showing through. Again, this is all an experiment. It might make something interesting, and it might make something boring, but what do you got to lose? Everything is then covered with plastic wrap, except for the one open one, and weighted down with a heavy book. I have a shelf of art books in my studio, and that's the one I usually grab, because some of them are big and heavy. Great books, by the way. I wait overnight and take a peek underneath the next day. Here's how my table looked that night. Now the cleanup begins. I have to put all the paints back together again, put the eyedroppers in, and screw them on carefully so they don't spill in their box and make a horrible mess. Like I said, I usually wait a whole night and take a peek underneath one of them in the morning. I lift up the plastic wrap and look. If it's very wet, then I'll let it sit longer. And if it's dry or almost dry underneath the plastic wrap, then I'll take it off. If the atmosphere is very, very wet and it's raining, it takes longer for it to dry. Put things away, I take a look at my hands. And my hands are really dirty. I guess I could wear gloves. But getting into the creative process, getting paint all over yourself and playing. After working in the studio for hours on something specific, it's really very freeing just to play and let your intuition guide you. It's almost like uh, fun with art when you're a little child. Anyway, I call it my art play day and I have a great time. I hope you do too sometime. And the next day, I take the plastic wrap off. The plastic wrap leaves an impression in the wet paint because I put the heavy books on top. If I squint my eyes and look at the, at the paper from four different directions, very possibly I can see something interesting that I can then develop into a painting that I would not have thought of without doing the process in the beginning. This is the one that was not covered with plastic wrap and how it looks now. One of the things that's really nice about acrylic ink is that it can behave very similarly to watercolor when it's applied wet. And yet, unlike watercolor, it does not fade when it's dry. So if you put down very bright colors, they're going to be very bright when they dry. 
One of the bad things about using this is that once it dries, it doesn't move. It does not come up. You can't lift it. And what you have is what you have. You'll have to cover it over if you don't like something that you have there. But that's all part of the playing process and the learning process. This is the next one. This was the floral there where I tried to leave some of the underlying pink showing through. This one looks like it has possibilities to me. But my next next part of my process is to put the dried paintings up across the room and then slowly rotate them and look at them in every orientation until I see something that I believe I can develop into a picture. If I can't see anything to develop, then I'll set it aside for a while. And sometimes something will come up later for me. It's a fun process. Here's another one after the plastic wrap has been removed. I see some interesting things to work with. Possibly, but I won't know until I look at it some more. Taking the plastic wrap off the last one. This one came out quite dark, but I do like the rainbow colors that I see showing through. And I'm wondering about the possibility of using the white ink to make a waterfall or a stream trickling through a dark forest, because the white ink will show up against this color, and I can add a lot of structure with that. I'm looking forward to developing these and seeing what comes up. I'm sure as you look, you might see something entirely different. And that's one of the neatest things about this kind of process, is that everybody sees the world differently and sees paintings differently, and will make something different out of it. I hope you enjoyed my video. What do you have to lose? I hope you got some ideas for yourself and things that you might try. If you have any failed artwork lying around, I'd like to ask you to give it a thumbs up and there's links below where you can ring a bell and that will allow you to subscribe so you get notices whenever I post a new video. There's also some links to take a look at my art page on Facebook, uh, my blog about art and life, and some of the products I use to create art. Another link will take you to my art products page for purchase, things such as prints of my work. I appreciate your comments, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.